questions for tonight? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Is it possible to follow two tariqahs at the same time due to location issues? Apologize for my adab. Yeah, you can come closer to the mic. I think we answered everything today before you said that. <laughs> so I made no man with two hearts. So anytime you're with a shaykh, you're giving your heart and soul to that shaykh. And that's why we describe the bayat, that your bayat is that I'm taking this Muhammadan's hand to reach to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and to, to receive my coordinates to fulfill my covenant with Allah to make my Islam real. <coughs> <coughs> and everyone whom been guided by Allah is been guided by what they need, what Allah wants for them to understand, not what they want to understand. That's why then every shaykh has a unique teaching that not meant for everyone. The ones whom guided to him it's because their soul has an affinity an understanding of his type of knowledge and as a result they're drawn to that. When you become drawn to that, your loyalty means your heart and your soul is now connected with that shaykh. So how can you sit somewhere else and connect again your heart and soul? And we said before each shaykh has a different type of teaching. If they're all within Naqshbaniyya means if you sit with our shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad what the Sallallahu Alaihi then that's the shaykh, it's the same family, it's the same tariqah. But when you sit with other shaykhs that are not under that flag, that they don't take from the same grand shaykh, from the same grand shaykh, from the same grand shaykh, then you're sitting with a different curriculum. So how can your heart be loyal to two or three different? And that's why from amongst their teaching it's a zina. That as soon as you're loyal to a shaykh and you're putting your heart and soul into that teaching and they're teaching you from their gifts and their soul and you take from that and you go to somebody else, it's like a zina that you are now in an adulterous sort of difficulty because now you're taking from that person. Are you loyal to them too? And then again taking their secrets and you begin to sit with three, four people taking all their secrets. And we described that I think on this Saturday weekend show that came out. So people have to watch these episodes that come out, they're very timely, they're miraculous in their nature because I give the talk long time ago, the gentlemen who put it together, our producers, they come with the clips themselves by their own inspirations, they put it out and it's exactly the timing of the people who watch it that many from the audience of our students get all their answers that week from that show. So in its nature it's very miraculous. So that answer was already in that show because this is about how you're going to make your faith real. I'm going to listen, I'm going to implement what he taught, then Allah will make my faith to be real. That's why in a group of many people the shaykh began talking about Armageddon. The dunya people say, oh we don't know what he's talking about. The spiritual one says, I know exactly what he talked about. He talked about Armageddon, I believed and now I saw it. He talked about Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, I saw it. Other people think, oh this shaykh don't know what they're talking about, these things came and went, nothing happened. Nothing happened for you but the one whom believed and practiced, everything happened for them. And we said that that is the symbol of Sayyidina Khidr in the Qur'an, that was the dalil in the Qur'an, he's the unseen Prophet of Allah And that was Nabi Musa's difficulty, he had to accompany an unseen Prophet and be humiliated by the people who could see him doing all sorts of uh, interesting things with nobody there to blame. He broke a boat and nobody could see Sayyidina Khidr, it just looked like Nabi Musa was breaking something. So he said, I'm not going to explain this to people. So Sayyidina Khidr is the example of that. 
If we went to the masjid in Turkey and they said, oh this is where Sayyidina Khidr salams maqam and door is, I say, you know I see him right there. And somebody says, I don't see him. I say, yeah but you have to see through your heart. You know if you see with your physical eyes, through your heart you connect and if the sincerity is there, he's right in front of you. So this world of faith is miraculous but we have to believe, we have to practice, we have to be loyal, have good characteristics, Allah opens everything, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Can we acquire people's bad characteristics by staying with them for a long time? Sure, that's all the teaching. You, you acquire everything. You acquire good characteristics by accompanying good people. You acquire bad characteristics by accompanying bad people. You can even be a good person, get a job with a bad manager, in no time you'll have bad character, right? Because you adapt the characteristics and the protocol of the manager. So you go there the manager says, oh this, this like this, this he talk bad about all the customers, so, you know take from them like this, steal like this, uh, make the price like this, do like this, all <laughs> that characteristic will be trained on you how to govern yourself. So of course you become bad in no time, you'll take all the characteristics of this bad person. And then the energy of that person of course will be dressed upon people. So that's why then they have even more difficult time trying to keep themselves good when they're surrounded by negative and bad people. Now if they really want to struggle then alhamdulillah may give them an ability to do that. They keep their good character, they wash, they have their wudu, they keep their taweez, they try their best to talk in a good way with people, not to cheat people, not to act bad towards people and that becomes their struggle. But definitely energy being can affect everybody positive and negative, that's why you have to have the timeless reality and you have to get two copies and give one to a friend inshaAllah. <laughs> Those were from timeless reality questions. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi As salaam wa rahmatullah Could you please help us understand the wuzara of Sayyidina Mahdi? I didn't quite understand it when reading the timeless realities. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you added that part there. <laughs> You're safe from buying two copies. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, whatever you do of getting copies, Alhamdulillah, it, it, it supports our whole entire system so nothing is wasted in Allah's way. Anyone who's supporting us, turn on the internet, our, our main and, and most uh, exciting platform is Facebook. You have three trucks now driving all over the streets, picking up thousands of pounds of saved food, giving it everywhere, fixing orphanages, building 400 wells that's uh, at least $80,000 in wells have been constructed. So I mean immense amount of projects, a, a show that comes out through Canada, through the UK paid, paid programming and YouTube channels, social media channels. So you know that, that $30 for a book goes a long way. So anyone who's supporting you see the proof of what, what this uh, group is doing and, and the amount of uh, himma and the amount of energy a few good people have. Pakistan mashaAllah is just like all over the place. <laughs> then our guys in Chicago is Haji Misfa <laughs> is, is conquering entire Costco <laughs> facilities, picks up thousands of pounds. The Christians all want to become Muslim because he's bringing oh, them yeah. so much food. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, <laughs> mashaAllah. Yeah, he's going to all these Catholic organizations to give food and so he's getting all this food. He's one servant loved by Allah that picks up thousands of pounds of food. Haji Asim and his brother Habib, same thing in Los Angeles. Look at the photos and you see your, your contributions at work. And these are the shareholders, better than having Tesla, Microsoft and uh, <laughs> Yahoo and Google shares is you have <laughs> shares in these projects. That everything dresses you with your eternal soul. So every time they pick up food and, and give a, a bite for somebody to eat, Allah gives the whole collective organization for all their efforts and all their participation.
And so thousands of thousands of pounds of food are being eaten by people. And then Hajj Omar and Hayat and Junaid and all the guys who are uh, Jawad and all the guys who are active in Vancouver running the center, doing the zikr, putting out thousands of pounds of food on the street. And it's just amazing that how much of this they were going to throw away. You know when we're all fasting and you look at these, these muffins, these foods, this is a, an, a, these are the countries of immense abundance. And they're just going to throw this, this blessing away and Allah is giving it for us to be rescued. So alhamdulillah for the immensity that Allah gave us this gift to be able to go out and, and to get that, to get the reward of something that would be thrown away and to feed people and make them happy. And the Catholic Archdiocese they want to become Muslim because <laughs> they love what he's doing and <laughs> they, they don't understand how he gets so much food. So so Allah, Allah. This, is, this is a, a great uh, representation and a great uh, love for Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah so Allah give us a hundred more cars on the road and Ameen. as many cars as you have on the road as much as Allah's filling them up with food InshaAllah. Allah. What was the question? <laughs> but Sayyidina <laughs> Mahdi, <laughs> Wuzara of Sayyidina Mahdi. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It's, it's an object to, to make your connection with your heart. So that, that's what's important. We said before when, you, when we talk about it, we're asking for their nazar and madad. But when the student tries to, to think too much about it, the fear is that you are connecting in the wrong direction. They are not going to to interfere with you, they're not going to deal with you. It's a distraction in your madad and your connection because they are loyal to their service to Prophet The shaykh needs their nazar because of the support and what they grant of a support. The student needs the nazar of the shaykh. So there's a, there's a qisa in a story where shaykh he says to a student that there's a river we have to cross, a lake or water we have to cross. I'm going to give you zikr, repeat your zikr and follow me. And so as the shaykh is making his zikr he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, begin to walk on the water and the student right behind him and he gave him a zikr to do and the student's doing the zikr and they're walking. And then the nafs of the student thinks that if I'm walking with this zikr, let me hear what the shaykh is saying. And then he hears the shaykh's zikr and he begins to recite that zikr and falls. Shaykh turns around, so what are you doing? Didn't I tell you what to, to recite? But the natural inclination is that, no I'm like you, I'm a shaykh too, I want to recite what you're reciting. And that's when he fell. So means that when we give out these names in our du'a is that they're nazar to support us in many different ways and different things that are happening. But for, for the student, don't let it be a distraction from making your connection. That you have to master the connection with the shaykh, you feel the heart and the presence of the shaykh and through his shaykh and his shaykh that you are connected with them, you've, you've taken the teaching, you understood the teaching and then they begin to send a fires into the heart. And then anything you reside, recite from Sayyidina Mahdi, uh, Shamat al-Faddani, Abdul Rafu Yamani, Yusuf al-Siddiq, Imam al Imam al I can't even say the names right like this. But when you start to recite their names. At that time it's just a recitation for their fires, but don't let it be a distraction where I'm going to, oh Shammat al-Fadani I now want to understand and please come to me, you've lost your and distracted yourself now again that what happened to your shaykh. They're not going to come and, and over, override the shaykh's connection and then now make you to be their, their murid, so it doesn't work that way. When you read the levels of the heart then each level of the heart will be important for you to understand just to understand their names but the fires has to come from the shaykh. The certificate has to be signed by the shaykh that the student is connected, they're listened, they're disciplined, they're progressing, they're supporting, they're doing all of the different variables. Then this, the shaykh is signing that certificate in a spiritual realm and as a result then that fires is reaching to the student. In the levels of the heart. From qalb to sir. So anyone who has the levels of the heart or go to Muhammadan way. And you go to the levels of the heart on Muhammadan way, the articles are all there. And you read about the qalb is one but 
for tonight you read about the sir. And the sir has to do with the level of red and why Sayyidina Mahdi is associated with red. Why Sayyidina Umar Farooq is associated with red. Why is Sayyidina Mikail associated with red? And red represents the station of death and the station of war. So you read those articles, read those sections of the sir from the qad to the sir and for the opening of the secret once you've been dressed by the qalb and the oceans of knowledge then the ayat al kareem qul ja al haq that say O oh, to the truth that when the truth comes falsehood perishes and that falsehood by its nature is always perishing it's nothing to stand on so it means then that has to do with the tremendous light of haq and that haq with the dress of that light, with the dress of that red and to become Mahdiyoon and that's why that signal comes to the moon every time there's a, an important event of that nature, that signal is coming for that reality. It sends out a red that this is a Mahdiyoon dress, this is a sign of, of war, that heavens are, are going to bring war upon this earth and that to be dressed by that tajalli and to be dressed by those realities. And at every moment there's a, a war upon this earth, one that every, every believer is in a continuous war against devils. So this is our spiritual war at all times, that anyone who doesn't know that then must be have given themselves completely to shaitan. So anyone whom is struggling and difficulty and continuously trying to keep themselves upright and on the straight and narrow. They know that there's a war and that war is for their heart and for their soul. So then these are our signs for Allah's support and the events that are happening and the tariqah is based on making the madad, the connection and then the knowledges have power, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam <coughs> Sayyidi what is the reality of wadiyah a jinn in Medina Sharif? The reality of what? Wadiya a jinn. Wadiya wa valley. The valley of the jinn. In the jinn uh, masjid, the valley of the jinn where the, the cars are moving. Yeah, these are, these are areas where the, the jinn are populated and the tourists like to go there and, and do something with their car and put it in neutral and the car starts to, to roll by itself. And yeah, these again, these are, you know, the people whom are trying to convince themselves that this is, a, is real. When you don't need convincing because they attack you every night and you have difficulties all around you because of them, then you don't need to go to Wadi of the Jinn and to have them play with your car. But until you believe people are doing these types of things, looking for these types of things. But for the believer then you should pretty much understand they're, they're in your life, they're making everything upside down, they're, they're attacking you at every level, they attack your family, confuse everyone in your home and in your household. So you, you don't… You're, you, the valley of jinn is in your home, <laughs> in everyone's home. That's why they're fighting, that's why they're yelling, that's why they're screaming, that's why some are sick and some are disturbed and, and some are like this and some are like that. You think that's happening just out of nowhere? Or that these beings are coming and destroying all the circuits of mankind and the pandemics, all of those talk the pandemics were all about that. That they have come onto the earth, they're on everything and everywhere, now it's a matter of fighting them. So the believer has to fight them through spiritual means. And that's why you don't go left and right and ask about it. You just go to our websites and you get your ta'weez, you get your awrads and don't say, is this allowed, it's not allowed. You're the one saying that you're having problems, get the ta'weez and put it on, don't think and don't talk. Just put the ta'weez on and then begin to learn how to meditate and make the connection. These are, these are knowledges of a higher level and of course many common people know nothing about that. So you can't compare with them and ask them and this are, these are Allah again Allah's ni'mat. Those whom Allah guides then they're alhamdulillah guided.
and they're safe from these difficulties. They learn their madad and how to connect so that the madad of the shaykhs are around them and the shaykhs can be from jinn and ints. So don't think that the shaykhs are all just human. We said before two of the Ashab al-Kaf in Qur'an were jinn and through their power Ashab al-Kaf were able to stay Ashab al-Kaf. It's by Izzatullah that they have power but Allah sent the two jinn in the cave to give them that ability. So you know you have to read Tabari and, and, and read all of the background knowledges of Holy Qur'an and the stories from Holy Qur'an. They're not just beginning and ending in Qur'an. Qur'an is just gives you a summary and a, a brief explanation about. But these stories and these realities they have a whole history of knowledge behind them. So yeah, so the, the jinn were in the cave making them capable of being subdued for 305 years or whatever the time length was. So it means then these are the same realities that Allah is giving to tariqahs that put those taweez on, recite these madad and then from jinn and ins and the shaykhs that are from jinn and ins. They will come and be around the servant, be in their homes, be with their families as a protection to ward off all of these negativities, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, can you speak a little bit about the empty quarters of Sayyidina Mahdi? Rubba Khalid, the empty quarters of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. And they say the happy cave that is a, a line in an area of the deserts of Saudi Arabia that they say is an empty quarter that nobody can go into that region. And when they ta try to find the cave of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, the jinn make all the sand to go up and to bury anybody trying and or tempting to enter into that region. And within that region is a cave for the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam in which he has a, an association. And in the association are the 50 deputies and the 40 Nawab. That are being dressed by that reality always in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and receiving their isharat and the seven wazirs, inshaAllah. I think my numbers are off, they equal 99. Yeah, I think it's, it's 50 and, and 41 and 7 and then Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. But the importance of the cave is that the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam and for us the importance on how to bring that back to ourself is again was the beginning of the month of hijrah in which we ran to the cave in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that that cave in the presence of the Prophet is the cave of safety and love. That when we enter into that love, enter into that ish, that Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam's light and love is in that cave already. So it means to take ourselves to the cave of Prophet to become a shaqiyoon and have this immense love and immense blessings, then that light from Prophet begin to dress the believers to become Mahdiyoon and as a result their love and ishq to be with Sayyidina Mahdi is a gift from Prophet that they want so much and begin to yearn for that reality to become Mahdiyoon, rightly guided servants of Allah that have an immense love and, and good character inshaAllah. We pray that Allah dress us from these lights, bless us from these lights and that our good character to allow our hearts to be dressed and blessed by these lights inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa 
وبصير سورة الفاتحة